Hey, how's it going everybody? In this video we're going to talk about the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law is basically just a combination of three of the gas laws that we have already looked at so far. So in this picture here, this is just a picture of three uh, gas cylinders that I have collected over my first year as an educator. The one all the way on the left there is a uh, propane torch. So the propane in that cylinder, it's probably a liquid. I think it's compressible down into a liquid. Uh, but as soon as you release the valve, it certainly comes out as a gas and then it's quickly ignited and it burns really, really, really hot. So hot that you can actually bend glass with it. Uh, which is what I usually do with it. Um, I also kill spiders with it because it's kind of fun and I have sort of a sick and twisted sense of humor. Anyway, moving on to the cylinder in the middle there, that contains my beloved sulfur hexafluoride gas that's really fun and has some interesting effects on your voice. Uh, and then on the right hand side is a cylinder of oxygen gas, uh, which makes for some pretty exciting uh, combustion. Uh, burning demonstrations. So the ideal gas law governs the behavior of all of these gases uh, both before, uh, while they're in the cylinder, and of course after they exit the cylinder. So let's get into the ideal gas law. And we're going to do that by going into, again, the four basic properties of gases, uh, which are pressure, volume, uh, temperature, and the amount in moles, which are denoted by P, V, T, and N respectively. So the ideal gas law is a way to, is basically just one easy to use equation uh, that incorporates all four of these properties of gases. So it's pretty nice. And in order to understand the ideal gas law, what we're going to do is we're basically going to derive uh, the ideal gas law equation using some relationships that we've already looked at so far in this uh, playlist. So uh, if we recall, Let's talk about uh, the two properties, pressure and volume, real quick. Remember that pressure is uh, inversely proportional uh, to the volume of a gas, which means as you increase the volume of a gas, the pressure is going to decrease and vice versa. So that means that the volume is um, directly proportional to one over the pressure. The volume is directly proportional to the reciprocal of the, pre of the pressure. And this relationship is known as Boyle's Law. And then uh, if we take a look at the relationship between temperature and volume, uh, that's a direct proportionality. So that means that as the temperature is increased, uh, the volume will increase. And again, that's assuming the other two variables are held constant. I forgot to mention that, uh, that um, if we go back to Boyle's Law for a second, uh, the volume is inversely proportional to pressure if you keep the amount and the temperature constant. So all of these gas laws are pretty much understood uh, that the other two properties of the gases are kept constant. But again, going back to this volume temperature relationship, again, as you heat a gas up, it's going to expand. And this explains why heat rises, uh, and it, it's what allows us to enjoy a nice hot air balloon ride. And this relationship is known as Charles's Law. And then finally, uh, if we look at the relationship between the volume and the amount in moles, uh, keeping the temperature and the pressure constant, uh, that's also a direct proportionality. So that means that uh, if you add more gas to a system, uh, the volume of that gas will expand in order to keep the pressure and the temperature of that gas constant, and that is what we call Avogadro's Law. So I have a video for each of these three laws, so if you'd like to view a video on any of these three laws, uh, please feel free to click those blue underlined links, and that will take you straight to the video. So again, we have all of these three portionalities, and we can combine these three portionalities into one. And it looks sort of like this. We have the volume, which is directly proportional to the product of the amount in moles and the temperature divided by the pressure. And we can turn this proportionality into an equation as long as we incorporate a, uh, a proportionality constant. And that proportionality constant is usually denoted as a capital R. So that means that V is equal to the product of the proportionality constant the amount and the temperature divided by the pressure. And then finally, we can clean this equation up a little bit uh, by uh, multiplying both sides of the equation by the pressure. That's going to put the entire equation on one line, uh, so it makes it look a little bit nicer. And then finally, we arrive at PV equals NRT. So this is the ideal gas law equation. PV equals NRT. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to say pivnert. I don't know why. They just kind of jumble it all together. Pivnert. 
uh, whatever helps you remember it. Personally, again, I don't really think uh, PV equals NRT is that hard to memorize, but nevertheless, do whatever you have to do. So PV equals NRT. That's the ideal gas law equation. P, of course, that's the pressure of the gas. V, that is the volume of the gas. N, again, that's the amount of the gas. T, that's the temperature of the gas. And then R, that is that proportionality constant. And this is called the ideal gas constant. So it's a constant, it does not change. And the value of the ideal gas constant R is this. It is 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres over moles times kelvins. So that whole thing, liters times atmospheres over moles times kelvins, that is the unit for the ideal gas constant. Notice that because the ideal gas constant has the unit that it does, that means that all four of those properties have to be uh, represented, they have to be reported in units that are compatible with that ideal gas constant. So in other words, the pressure has to be in atmospheres. The volume has to be in liters. The amount has to be in moles. And finally, the temperature has to be in kelvins. So if any of these properties are uh, reported in units that don't match up with the ideal gas constant, then you're gonna have to do a little bit of converting. You're gonna have to convert those properties into the units that are compatible with that with that R, that ideal gas constant. So the way that the ideal gas equation, or the ideal gas law equation rather, the way that this is used is if you know any three of these properties between pressure, volume, amount, and temperature, if you know any three of them, then you can solve for the fourth one. You can solve for the unknown one. And so just before we end this video, we're gonna do just that. So this problem says that we have a 10.0 liter vessel and it has a gas in it with a pressure of 5.00 atmospheres and it has a temperature of 0, 0.00 degrees Celsius. And we have to find the amount of the gas in moles. Now this is usually the case. Usually you're gonna know the volume, the uh, pressure and the temperature because those three things are fairly easy to measure. It's very difficult, however, to actually count the amount of atoms or the amount of uh, molecules of a gas. Usually you're gonna have the volume, the pressure, and the temperature, and you'll have to find the amount. So that's what we're doing right now. That's usually what a chemist will find himself or herself doing. So again, we're gonna use our PV equals NRT. We wanna solve for N, that's the amount in moles, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're gonna divide both sides of that ideal gas law equation by RT, and that's gonna give us that N equals PV over RT. So we're gonna to have to uh, just plug in our values at this point. So again, P, that's the pressure, that's the 5.00 atmospheres. Uh, the volume, that's 10.0 liters. The ideal gas constant, that's R. You may want to go ahead and memorize this. 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvin. Uh, it seems like a lot to memorize, but again, if you practice enough times, you're gonna, you will, by default, memorize this stuff. And then the temperature, that's 0, 0.00 degrees Celsius. But again, we have to use units that are compatible with the ideal gas constant. So it's liters times atmospheres over moles times Kelvins, not liters times atmospheres over moles times degrees Celsius. So we have to go from degrees Celsius to Kelvins, uh, which is as easy as just adding 273.15. And so we get 273.15 Kelvins as our temperature. So uh, then we're going to go ahead and cancel our units. The atmospheres are going to cancel. The liters are, al are, are also going to cancel. Uh, the kelvins are going to ca uh, cancel. And notice that the only unit that hasn't canceled is the moles. That's the unit that we want because, again, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we're going to carry out this uh, mathematical operation in our calculator. Just multiply the top two terms and divide by the product of the bottom two terms. Uh, we're going to keep it to three sig figs. And our final answer is going to be 2.23 moles. So we just figured out the amount of this gas uh, in this 10.0 liter, 5.00 atmospheres, 0, 0.00 degrees Celsius uh, container. So I hope this video was help to, helpful to you a little bit. And uh, all right, that is it. Keep on keeping on.